On May 27th, 1986, Chief Justice Berger advised me that he wanted to devote his full energies in the coming year to the important work of the Commission on the Bicentennial of the Constitution, and for that reason would be retiring as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court as of the end of the Court's current term. Today, I received with regret Chief Justice Berger's letter formally notifying me of his retirement. And immediately after my conversation with the Chief Justice, I had directed my Chief of Staff, together with the Attorney General and the Counsel to the President, to develop recommendations for a successor. And I'm pleased to announce my intention to nominate William H. Rehnquist, currently an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, as the new Chief Justice of the United States. Upon Justice Rehnquist's confirmation, I intend to nominate Antonin Scalia, currently a judge of the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit, as Justice Rehnquist's successor. In taking this action, I am mindful of the importance of these nominations. The Supreme Court of the United States is the final arbiter of our Constitution and the meaning of our laws. The Chief Justice and the eight Associate Justices of the Court must not only be just jurists of the highest competence, they must also be attentive to the rights specifically guaranteed in our Constitution and the proper role of the courts in our democratic system. In choosing Justice Rehnquist and Judge Scalia, I have not only selected judges who are sensitive to these matters, but through their distinguished backgrounds and achievements, reflect my desire to appoint the most qualified individuals to serve in our courts. Justice Rehnquist has been an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court since 1971, a role in which he has served with great distinction and skill. He is noted for his intellectual power, the lucidity of his opinions and the respect he enjoys among his colleagues. Judge Scalia has been a judge of the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit since 1982. His great personal energy, the force of his intellect, and the depth of his understanding of our constitutional jurisprudence uniquely qualify him for elevation to our highest court. I hope the Senate will promptly consider and confirm these gifted interpreters of our laws. And in closing, I want to say a word about Chief Justice Berger. He has led the court, the Supreme Court, for 17 years, a time of great change and yet a period also of consolidation and stability in the decisions of the court. Under Chief Justice Berger's guidance, the court has remained faithful to precedent while it sought out the principles that underlay the framers' words. He is retiring now in order to devote his full attentions to a momentous occasion in our country's history, the observance in 1987 of the 200th anniversary of the Constitution. This is an endeavor for which all Americans will be grateful and to which I and the members of the administration will lend our total support. I'm proud and honored to stand here today with Chief Justice Berger, with Justice Rehnquist, and with Judge Scalia, and to discharge my constitutional responsibilities as President of the United States. Thank you all. God bless you. President, what impact do you think this will have on the abortion what? issue, perhaps the most emotional uh, issue facing the court? It probably won't surprise you when I tell you that I'm not going to take any questions now. Chief Justice Berger, you're available for any questions you might have of him. And I think the others of us are... Are you satisfied that the judge agrees with you on the abortion issue, though, sir? Are you satisfied that the judge agrees with you on the abortion issue? I'm not going to answer any questions. If I start answering one... Uh, Mr. President, what, what was the process which led you to Judge Scalia? Did you know him before? Or did people come to you and recommend him? What was the process? I previously appointed him to his presence. But what made you well, think sure, that he Surely was you the must think, sir, that he agrees with you on uh, such issues as abortion, affirmative action, prayer in the schools? That's a question. And uh, as you said, why didn't you appoint Mr. Meese? Uh, I can't say no questions. I can say no answers. <laughs> Mr. President, without a question, yes, would right. you tell us a little bit about the new justice? Uh, Whatever you can. Background. There will be background material. What do you mean for the American could people? Could be made available to you. Do you know him personally? Yes. Do you want to take questions on another subject? Have you heard from Gorbachev on the summit yet, sir? Uh, no, I think the subject today is justice. Well, can we ask Justice Berger? Chief Justice Berger, could you? Did he recommend his successor? 
No, the justice said that he would not presume to do that. He did discuss uh, with me uh, individuals and uh, give me his opinion of it. Well, Mr. Chief Justice, maybe it's appropriate now to ask you to give us your thoughts after, uh, what, since 1969, 17 years of the court? 17 years, yes. Sum up, sum up your tenure. What do you think you've done for this court? It's taken me about 17 years, and you don't want to spend that much time. Why are you leaving the court, sir? Could you, could you explain a little bit why you're leaving the court? For one primary reason, that the 200th anniversary of the Constitution got a late start, the celebration got a late start, it is vastly underfinanced, and we're going to have the devil's own time trying to do the kind of a job that ought to be done for this great event. John Warner, the uh, chairman of the 76th event, you remember, was drafted from his job as Secretary of the Navy, which he did not want to leave. Uh, and he told me, he being an old friend, he told me when this subject came up uh, last year, 